Welcome to another online worship service from St. John, St. Paul, and Emmanuel Lutheran Churches of Charter Oak, coming to you from the sanctuary here at St. John in town. Happy Mother's Day to all moms out there. Uh, we certainly give thanks for the gift of Christian mothers, uh, God's, one of God's precious gifts. Many of us uh, have had the blessing of, of having a Christian mother who taught us to uh, know and love our Savior, and uh, we remember them on this day, whether they are living or already uh, in heaven. Our order of worship today is page 151 in the Lutheran Service Book, Divine Service Setting 1. We will be following that, uh, and uh, I will let you know when some of the liturg liturgy items are coming up. Also, we'll be informing you of the hymns again, so can follow along in the worship service, and uh, we encourage you to sing and participate as you are able. We begin the service today with our opening hymn, number 829, Christ the Eternal Lord, number 829, 829 in the Lutheran service book.
Once again, the order of worship is on page 151 of the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in the ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Now let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The epistle for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in the Alleluia verse from page 156 of the Lutheran service book. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also and you know the way to where I am going. 
Thomas said to him, Lord, we, don't know, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the hymn of the day, hymn number 490 in the Lutheran service book, 490, 490, Jesus Lives, the Victories Won.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God in which we base our meditation on this fifth Sunday of Easter is the Gospel lesson from John 14. We have read it already. Just the first verse I will repeat today. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, one of, the out, un, one of the unfortunate outcomes of this pandemic, and perhaps it will turn out to be a lasting outcome, is that we have created a culture of fear. The underlying motives may be good. We want to prevent the spread of the virus. We want to protect those who are most vulnerable. But the result has been to make us afraid. What we are being told is that I need to stay away from you because you might give me the virus. I'm afraid. Or I need to wear a mask to pro protect you from getting the virus because I might have it and don't know that I have it. I'm afraid. I need to disinfect everything I bring home from the store because someone who is infected might have coughed on it and before I got there, I'm afraid. Now there are good reasons for taking some of these precautions. And I do try to follow many of them. I do try to keep a six-foot distance. I do wear a mask when I go to the grocery store. I haven't yet resorted to disinfecting my groceries when I get home. As a church, our leaders are having to consider what safety precautions need to be taken when we return to in-person er, in worship again. And these will include social distancing and disinfecting according to government guidelines. I can tell you right now that there will be some things we will probably avoid for a while, like shaking hands or passing the offering plate. All the same, I can't help but be struck at how differently our children are processing these new realities. They don't seem to be afraid at all. They toss a football around and they don't sanitize it after someone else has touched it. I saw a group of young teenage boys, probably about 13 or 14 years old, wrestling with each other like teenage boys do. That's not social distancing. And yet, they're not afraid. We adults are all worried about social distancing and sanitization, and we need to be concerned about those things. But they're not worried at all. They just do what kids do. Granted, some children are worriers. You may have one. But most kids are wired to believe that things will be okay. That's the kind of trust that Jesus wants us to have in him as he speaks to us in our text for today. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your hearts be troubled. Even as we have all these fears and all these things to consider, we can turn to our risen Savior Jesus. As the hymn verse says, he lives to calm my troubled heart. You know, when our hearts are troubled, the reason is often because we aren't seeing our Lord clearly. In John 14, Jesus is speaking to his disciples on the night before his crucifixion. He knows that his arrest and suffering and death are going to be extremely unsettling for his disciples. So he reminds them what all this is leading to. It's all preparation for heaven. In my Father's house are many rooms. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas probably voices what all the disciples are thinking. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? One of the obstacles to let not your hearts be troubled is that Jesus is leading us and we are trying to follow him, but we don't always know where he is going. We can't see what the future holds for us. With this virus, there are many uncertainties. How long will this time of social distancing last? When my place of work opens up, will it be safe to go back? When will it be safe for us to come together in God's house again? How will we do communion if social distancing is still required? What will school be like? Will some things in our lives change permanently because of this virus? We don't know where God is going with this. 
We don't have the answers. We can't see the end. Another problem is that when our hearts are troubled, God becomes blurry. Another disciple, Philip, gives voice to that problem. He asked Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and it will be enough for us. How many times have we said something like this? Lord, if you're out there, give me a sign. Or, Lord, if you could only show me what I need to do. And then we wait and nothing seems to happen. And the decision still has to be made. Another barrier, another obstacle to let not your hearts be troubled. We look at this pandemic or any difficulty that comes into our lives, sickness, loss of job, plunging farm prices, and we wonder, what is God doing? Is he punishing us? Is he calling people back to himself? Is he taking away all our gods that we worship, like money and sports and entertainment? Is he angry? God's ways are not our ways. The whys remain a mystery. We don't understand what God is doing. We sure would like to know. Jesus, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. You've got to love Jesus' answers. It's not, oh, you don't get it. It's gentle. Have I been with you so long, Philip, and you still don't know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. You do believe that, right? Remember? Let not your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. Believe in God. Believe also in me. When our hearts are troubled, we turn to Jesus. The antidote for fear is trust. Believe in God, believe also in me. When Thomas objected to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus simply said, I am the way and the truth and the life. This is one of Jesus' I am statements in the Gospel of John. When his disciples are in need of comfort, When they're in need of direction, in need of hope, in need of life and salvation, Jesus always directs us to himself. I am what you need. Here, when we don't know the way, when we can't see where we are going, when we can't see an end to the isolation and the fear this pandemic has caused, Jesus is the way. We walk with him. We follow him. We trust him like children. We let him do the worrying. Easier said than done, I know. But he is leading us. He is our good shepherd. He walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. When we are not sure of the, tr- the, of the truth, Jesus is the truth. There are a lot of claims out there, different projections about how many people will die from this virus or how long social distancing will need to last. Which of them are true? What's the truth about immunity or vaccine? Can people who don't have symptoms spread the infection? What's truth? Jesus is the truth. His word is truth. He has redeemed you. You are his. When we miss the life that we've had, the life that we think is the way life should be, Jesus is the life. Life here in this verse is spiritual life, the life we have before God. It's from Jesus, it's in Jesus. We live through his death on the cross. Our sins are forgiven. See, life is not ultimately in physical health or in financial stability or in being able to do the things we are used to doing. It's our life in Jesus, the eternal life that we have as children of God. Jesus shows us the Father. He is one with God the Father. When you want to know what God the Father is like, Look at Jesus. John says, way back in chapter 1, no one has ever seen God. God, the only begotten, who is at the Father's side, that's Jesus, he has made him known. Human beings can't see God, but human beings have seen Jesus. He was truly here on earth. He came, lived, died, rose again. He did all those things to show us the Father. So what can you know? about the Father from looking at Jesus. The Father loves you. This is how God demonstrates his love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Father's love is seen in Jesus, who willingly suffered for your sins on the cross. The Father wants life for you. Jesus rose to give you life. Now he assures you, in my Father's house are many rooms. 
I'm going there to prepare a place for you. The Father has a place for you in His house. Jesus earned that place for you with His death and resurrection. The Father wants you to live forever there with Him. The Father wants health for you. God's creation was very good. Sickness and physical ailments were not part of God's original creation. They are here because of Adam and Eve's sin. Jesus healed sickness on earth, and He will remove it forever in heaven. He comes to restore the creation to what it was in Genesis, so that everything will be very good once again. And the Father uses suffering for our ultimate good. We see that also in Jesus. Jesus' death on the cross was the ultimate evil, but it accomplished the greatest good, the salvation of all mankind. So will God ultimately use this virus for our good? Yes. Romans 8.28 In all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. Let not your hearts be troubled sometimes seems like all the requirements, all the guidelines, all the media reports we see and hear about this virus are all about fear. I'm not saying we shouldn't be cautious. We should use common sense in following the guidelines in order to keep everybody healthy and safe. But Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. God is still God. So is your ultimate response to this virus going to be one of fear or one of faith? I've used this illustration before, but it fits just as well for this topic today. Imagine an old station wagon parked in a driveway. The car is packed for a trip, and peering out the back window are the smiling faces of three young children. You ask the children, where are you going? They don't know. How long, will it take you to, how long will it take you to get there? How long will you be gone? They don't know. What road are you taking to get there? They don't know. But you ask them, who is going with you? And their eyes light up and they say, Mommy and Daddy. Jesus goes with you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in Him. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us together confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As newborn infants who long for the pure spiritual milk, so let us come before the Lord, seeking His mercy, with confidence that His grace will be sufficient for all our need. Almighty Father, everlasting God, Your Son has revealed You to us as a merciful Lord. Give to us Your Holy Spirit, that we may believe in Him whom You have sent, and do the greater works He has told us we will do in His name. Lord, in Your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, you have promised to build up your church to be a holy priesthood that your people might offer the spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving acceptable to you. Bless your church and bring all congregations back together again. Bless all pastors who proclaim Christ to us. Bless all church workers and those preparing for full-time church vocation that your church may be supplied with faithful leaders and servants of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, your power brought all things into being, and still you preserve what you have made. 
Bless our president, the Congress of these United States, our governor, and all elected and appointed civil servants, so that they may, also, they may honor you and your purpose, establishing order and justice, encouraging virtue and protecting all life. Give wisdom and moderation to them in their leadership for the well-being of the nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have compassion upon the sick and those in need, and have promised not to ignore them in their afflictions. Turn back the pandemic across the globe and give us relief. Bless the sick with healing, those who suffer with strength and patience, and the dying with peace. Hear us on behalf of those who have requested our prayers, especially Melvin Gosler, who is undergoing cancer treatments, uh, Jolene Kettleson, Milroy Raby, Marlon Jepson, Irma Moss, Art Beck, and Blaine Schwingdorf for restoration of health, Pastor Merle Monken for recovery from surgery, Dale Swanson, the brother of Becky Jepson, who has tested positive for COVID-19, and Rex Lechtenberg of the Hebner Funeral Home in Denison, who is hospitalized in Council Bluff. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have established the home and bless those who show us your love. Bless all mothers and the children in their care. Bless all families and make their homes places of blessing and love where your word is spoken. Forgiveness reigns and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire youth to all that is good and pure and to seek after these things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us the wisdom of faith that through the Spirit we might know your Son to be the way, the truth, and the life. Bless all those who teach and all who learn that the goal of our knowledge may be to know Christ and to make him known. Do not let your word be bound, but let it have free course among us. Preserve those in isolation from idleness, and let, instead let our minds be renewed in scripture and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for your goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your throne of mercy. Hear us now in the name of and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude the service with hymn number 861, 861 in the Lutheran service book, Christ Be My Leader.